Hello and welcome to day seven of 12 Makes of Christmas, the 2020 edition. I'm Stephanie Subbing and this is all from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. So today we are doing a free pattern to go with today's video tutorial. We are going to do a scrappy Christmas tree mug rug. I love mug rugs this time of year because it's great because you can put your little mug of hot cocoa or tea or coffee, whatever you're drinking. Maybe you put a little Baileys in it because it's 2020, you might need a little something extra. And then also uh, you can have your little cookie there. So it's a great little Thing you could set up for Santa or just to have a little snack in the afternoon. So today we're going to do, uh, these are really cute. You can use them with your leftovers from your Christmas projects. I used a bunch of the greens that we had left in the shop from two Christmas lines and they worked really well together. That's a good thing about holiday and Christmas fabrics. You usually can get a lot of them together. And the rule of thumb is, is the more you use of any one color, the less it matters if they all work perfectly together. So I'm gonna show you how to do a half square triangle and get your points perfect every single time. And then we're gonna to put together these cute little mug rugs and how to quilt them as well. You can quilt them any way you want, but I'm gonna show you how I chose to do it. So super cute, you can easily make up a set of them to have out at the holidays. So the pattern for this is absolutely free to download. Just click on the link below or go to shop.quiltatexonomous.com and do a search for Scrappy Christmas Tree Mug Rug and you will find it. Um, it's got all your cutting instructions and rather than do it by width of fabric because we're dealing with scraps here, we're just gonna tell you how many you need of each size of square or rectangle to work with. So the biggest thing you're gonna need is a background and I chose this cute uh, pink one. It's pink and gold we don't have any more of this so sorry that's uh, the the uh, perks of owning the business you get to pick the last of the fabric sometimes um, but any neutral will work you could do white um, if you want maybe not white if you're you know if you spill a lot but uh, a nice little neutral is good and I've already drawn a line from corner to corner on the wrong side of this it's really important when you're drawing the line that you get right into the corner and that is because a lot of times when I'm watching people do this back when we could be in person sewing together um, people would mark it off and then they would follow the line and they wouldn't adjust to get to the corner. So it's important to just take your time. It's a good one to do while you're watching Netflix, maybe some holiday specials. Just go ahead and get that together. All right, so now we're just gonna place these guys right sides together, super simple. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew down both sides of that drawn line. If you want to, you can pin this. I typically don't. So if you were going to pin it, a lot of times I see people pin out here. That's not really gonna help you out much because these corners can shift a lot. So what you wanna do is always pin where you're going to be sewing. So in this case, I'm just gonna pin across the top because that will hold it in place and then across the bottom as well. Now these are pretty small and if you've done this technique before, you probably can do it pretty easily without needing to pin. So when we are sewing some triangles from squares, it's a really great way to do it because you are gonna be stitching that line while it's still attached to something, which means the bias is gonna stretch out less and you'll be more likely to have points where they belong. But what we're gonna do is we're essentially gonna treat, instead of sewing with our presser foot, even with the edge of the fabric, we're gonna pretend that the line we drew is the edge of the fabric. So we're gonna stitch all down one side, then we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna stitch all down the other side. And you can chain piece these. I just left one out. I've already sewn together the others to make this video go even faster. So if you do pin, what I like to do is just get it to where my foot is down on that and then I remove the pin because we don't want to sew over those pins. The other thing that I do whenever I'm sewing triangles from squares is I will sew with a scant quarter inch seam. That gives me just a little bit extra wiggle room so that my pieces turn out the right size when I trim them down later. So to do that, I just set my machine up to sew my quarter inch stitch and then I'll move my needle one needle width to the right and just sew the teeniest, smallest little bit of a seam there. Right, so I'm just going to sew down that first side. Move that pin. Then when I get down to here, what I like to do is hold the side here. So that way I maintain a nice scant quarter inch seam all the way down. Because if you wobble a little bit there, then your triangle point isn't going to turn out where it needs to be. All right, so if you were chain piecing these, you would just lift your presser foot up, slide the next one under, and keep going. In this case, we're just gonna go straight down the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out a little. You no need to clip those threads. We're just gonna go straight down the other side now. 
So now when we take a close look at this, I can see my seam lines here, and I'm gonna measure it. I'm gonna make sure it's a half inch or a little bit less. And in this case it is. It's just a teeny little bit less than a half an inch, which is great. Um, we wouldn't want it to be less than 3 eighths of an inch, so that doesn't give you enough when you cut it apart. But somewhere between half and 3 eighths of an inch is absolutely fantastic for when you're doing these square triangles from a square. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut down that line that we drew. If you're not perfectly on it, it really is not the end of the world. What you don't wanna do is have too skinny of a seam. Anything less than a, uh, about an eighth of an inch or so, and you're gonna have trouble later on with your quilt. If that seam could pop open, or just with use, or in your quilting net on the long arm and you're having some stress with that. So do make sure that you have a good seam allowance in there, but again, if you're not straight on, don't stress about it. All right, so now we're gonna give this a press. And I always press my seams open. Well, almost always, 99% of the time, I'd say. And that gives me really, really sharp points. So if you've been struggling with those, sometimes there's just too much bulk in that seam to get it super good. So you're just going to open that up with your fingertips and put the nose of your iron straight down that seam. You want it to be nice and straight like this. If you end up seeing a wiggle in there, it means you got a pleat somewhere and you're gonna have a problem on the other side. So what we wanna do is flip that over when it's all done, make sure you have a nice straight line, and then I just press it for a second or two from the other side as well. So now it's time to give this a little bit of a trim. In this case, I'm gonna be trimming it to two and a half inches. And we shouldn't have too much to trim off. Um, I always size these so that they are an inch larger than they need to be. But what you wanna look for is first that your 45 degree line is right on that seam allowance. If it's off like this, then your point is never gonna go to the corner where it's supposed to be. So that is the most important one to get in line. Then you wanna make sure you get a little bit of fabric hanging past the measurement you're looking for, which is two and a half in this case, plus from the sides. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna cut on the right and top first. If you're left-handed, it would be the left and top, and you'll be switching this around. All right, so that's good. I got my corner going straight to the corner, just like that. I'm gonna give it a 180 degree flip. And this time I'm gonna line it up so that the edges that I just cut are now exactly even with that two and a half and that my 45 degree line is going straight down the center. So now we're gonna go ahead and give that a cut along the sides. And there we go. You can see we didn't take that much off, but it really makes a huge difference when the finished piece is all said and done. This is, you know, it'll fit together perfectly with our other pieces now that we've trimmed it, but it wouldn't have otherwise. And especially in a piece this small, that really matters when it comes to things laying nice and flat, which you want for a mug rug. All right, so I've got my scrappy uh, mug rug all laid out here. And again, I just used a bunch of greens from a couple of different Christmas lines that we still had. And I used a little bit of red. I had a little candy cane I thought would look really cute for that stump. I thought it looked just a little bit like bark. And if you've got a uh, Christmas stash, chances are you've got green and red, so that's always fun. All right, I'm gonna move my sewing machine back to that regular quarter inch stitch. We only need the scant when we're sewing those triangles from squares. Now for this first bit, we really don't need to uh, pin anything because of the way I'm gonna put it together. What I like to do is I'll sew these parts together and then these and these and these, and then I'll just keep laying everything back out and joining my rows, and I'm gonna wait to press until I've got everything all together. This really can go super fast, and you can have a lot of fun arranging these. And as always, if you're making a bunch of them, you could just stack it all up on top, and you could sew a bunch of first rows all at a time, then your second, third, and fourth, and make it go super fast, and then you can have a set of these in no time. So I don't really pin these. What I just do is I grab them and then I line up my corners just while I'm looking at them like that. And then I'll just feed it right under the machine. Do the same thing here. And that's nice, there's no points to match here. We will eventually have a couple of points, it's not too many. All right, since that second row has five pieces in it, I'm just gonna leave that one there for now. We'll get it sewn together on another pass. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my third row. Again, still no points, so super fast, super simple. We've got an odd number for the final row as well, so we'll just put the first two together, leave that there for now. 
like it always saves time in sewing when you can batch activities. So I'm gonna wait to press all this until I've got my rows completely sewn together. But for right now, I've got everything laid out so that way I can at least make sure that I've got everything in the right place, and I do. All right, so now we have just one little point to match up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. Now what I'm looking for here is to make sure that those lines are gonna come right on top of each other for that seam. And that is uh, pretty easy to do when you've got a seam like this because one half is a print, one half is a neutral, and it's really easy to tell what's what. So I'm gonna put a pin just in the right side of that seam allowance. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my needle down and stitch just a couple of stitches, then remove that pin and keep going. All right, so we got those first couple of stitches down, so I can go ahead and remove that pin. With that needle down, what it does is it kind of acts like a pin and holds that point together where I want it. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure those corners are together and sew the rest of the way down. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep joining as I go down. I'm gonna go ahead and match these two and we'll get that last little bit when we do a third pass here. All right, it's looking a little funny right now because we haven't pressed, but I just have to add this last bit to the side and then we are ready to press our rows. All right, so I'm just gonna work my way up, starting with that bottom row, pressing all of these seams open. Again, you get super flat joins when you do it that way and you'll love the way your points look. So I'm just gonna open that seam up, put the nose of my iron straight down. And then when I have bigger pieces like that too, I usually give that a little bit of a press as well. Now when you're pressing open, you kind of want to angle your iron away from seams like this, or you will flip them in the opposite direction. It's not very fun. All right, so once I have it all together, I usually hit it from the other side as well. Had a good press, get it super flat. All right, I'm gonna keep going, pressing all of these. When you do get to ones like this, where there's more going on, you wanna make sure you're lifting and pressing that iron rather than sliding it down, because you don't wanna press the seams and flip them as you're doing it, because they're looking so nice right now. We want them to stay that way. All right, so now it's looking more like a tree, which is fabulous. We used up some nice holiday scraps that we had left over from some of those quilts. So now we just have to pin these together and we are good to go. For this first one, we don't have any seams to match because it's an alternating row. So we have an even number of blocks in this one and an odd in this one. So I can just flip these guys right sides together. And what I did when I pinned that is I'm just gonna pin my corners to get those together. And then I'm just going to align the center as well. It's the same situation with the bottom. There really are no seams that are matching here. So we just need to get our corners and our center lined up and we're ready to sew. All right, so I'm just going to stitch my quarter inch seam. Just like when we're getting started, I really just leave that pin in until I get a couple of stitches in. Then I just make sure that those seams are lying nice and flat underneath. So when I stitch in here, I'm taking a look for a tiny little triangle. I'm gonna show it to you on this one here because it's a little easier to see when it's not under the sewing machine. You see this teeny tiny little triangle there that's made when the triangles come together. I'm gonna to sew just to the seam side of that tip of the triangle and that's what keeps you from cutting off your points when you're sewing them together. So I always slow down when I get to that point just to make sure I'm exactly where I wanna be. I'm gonna give these rows a press before I sew them together to create the final block. Now when you have this many seams, it's very, very critical that you're doing the lift and press because you do not want to flip those seams going the wrong way. So you can't slide your iron. You gotta lift it and then press it down. 
And when you do get it to the other side, you absolutely can slide it straight down the center like this. Get everything nice and flat. You can see we've got some really great points there. They ended up exactly where they were supposed to be and it's because I paid attention to where that teeny tiny little triangle was when I was sewing them together. All right, so the same thing, we're just joining two rows to make your block now and finish that up. I'm gonna pin on the sides and the center and then sew. All right, I've got one more thing to do before I consider this block done. So I don't like to put water in my iron because every single iron I've ever put water in eventually spits and I don't like that. And then also, I, I wanna make sure I keep it nice and I feel like steam distorts the fabric. So what I do instead to get really flat joins, because this is good, but it could be better, is I use a spray mister. This is meant for hair salons. It turns any liquid into an aerosol mist so you don't get little droplets all over your fabric. What I like to do is just give the seams a little bit of a miss there and then I'm gonna go over it one more time with the iron and I'm just gonna do one half and then you guys will be able to see the difference I mean look at how much flatter this half is laying than that one it's a lot more square and those points just look fantastic all right, so if you don't care about watching the quilting part of that, you can totally stop now. Go ahead and go download the Scrappy Christmas Tree Mug Rug pattern over at shop.quiltaddictsonomous.com. You can get going, make up a set of these for your holiday table or coffee table. I'm gonna go ahead and quilt this though as already. And I've already actually got one ready to go here and I've already layered it up. I just used my scrap batting. If you've quilted for any length of time, you have scrap batting. This is a great thing to use them for. I just cut mine to 10 inches square um, because uh, you don't need the big four inches uh, on either side when you're just doing something a little small like this. And then I use my extra pieces and just piece my back. That can be a little tricky when you're doing a really big thing, but for this, we certainly don't have to do that crazy of, of a bit. And I'm using 100% cotton batting here. So you can see that the fabric kind of sticks to it. When I lift it up, everything stays stuck together. So when you're working with a piece this small, you don't have to go crazy with pin basting it. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna base it with my sewing machine while I'm quilting. And I'm just gonna stitch down the uh, horizontal rows here. And I don't wanna stitch in the ditch because I pressed all those seams open. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch just next to that seam line. So that way I'm not going straight down, I'm just like a hair to the side of it. If you have a pair of Machiner's quilting gloves, I highly recommend you put them on for this step. It just makes it so much easier to quilt. And also, if you have an extension table, this is a good time to get that out as well so you have more spots to place your hands. Now, I'm not gonna secure any of these threads. First of all, I'm gonna change that sewing machine actually back to so that the needle's in the middle. And I'm not gonna secure these threads because I'm just gonna quilt right off. So I'm just using that walking foot and quilting right next to that ditch. I'm also gonna increase my stitch length to about 3.5 for this because we don't need to have the same teeny tiny stitch that we have for quilting. So I'm just gonna break those threads off and now I'm just gonna keep going down the next seam here. You can see I just went just next to it. These are mug rugs, they don't have to be precision quilting. But if you wanna use this as a chance to practice some of those three motion quilting stitches, by all means, go for it. All right, I'm gonna stitch on this last one here. All right, so now that I've got that good and basic, I can really do whatever I want to do from here on out. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna outline my entire tree and go along there. Now when I turn, I've already got a stitching line here, so I wanna make sure that I stay on that, and that way it doesn't create extra texture, it just accentuates what's already there. Now without breaking thread, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start outlining the inside of this tree at about a quarter inch interval. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch along the bottom here until I feel like I'm about a quarter inch away. And I'm actually gonna turn it in so that 
the feed dog here is right even with the edge of this. So I can see my upper feed dog, it's nice and white, it's really easy to see, is in line with the edge here. It's gonna be a little more in the quarter inch, it's probably gonna be more like three eighths of an inch, but it's a really easy guide for me to pay attention to. And I'm just gonna quilt around again on the inside. I'm gonna go forward a few, turn, and it looks like I need at least one more stitch forward. And that looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead. This time I'm lining up with the edge there again. This point's gonna be a little tricky. I went a little too far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually back stitch one and then turn. Now I'm gonna stop right on that seam and I'm gonna just take a few stitches forward, maybe one more. I'm gonna turn, nope, I gotta go one more here. I'm trying to keep that angle. Yet one more still. And now I'm at a good position to keep going. So I'm just keep doing this until I work my way around the entire bit again. All right, we're looking pretty cute here. We're definitely as secure as we would need to be if we were going to wash this, that it has been quilted enough for that. And so if you wanna do more, it's up to you. What I've done is I've done one outline stitch and it actually has filled up very nicely in that tree trunk. I definitely could do some more on the inside. Um, what I am gonna do is just a tad bit, I think I'm gonna outline uh, as well going around the outside one more time. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna do some diagonal stitches, I think that'll be cute and then I can just leave the tree as is and kind of let that scrappy fabric shine. So I'm going to use that same interval of stitching where I'm using the outside of that seam allowance and I'm just going to stitch diagonally across. Now you could always mark this out because right now I'm kind of flying blind here. I'm just kind of hoping I'm staying straight on that 45 degree angle for that section. But after this one, I've got a line to follow. So I can line it up with my stitching line that I just made and go ahead and stitch the rest of the way. All right, right now I'm stitching down that line where the fabric is. And now what I'm doing is I'm lining up the edge with that seam line that I have on the right instead of the left. So that way I can continue my 45 degree curve now for these, I don't want to be stopping and starting all the time because I'm going to have to anchor those threads. That's no fun. So I'm going to stitch a few stitches down. I took about three and I'm able to just turn it around and come back up and have the correct spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch until I come into that line and then I'm going to stitch into the corner along that original line that we stitched. And then again, I'm stitching down in the ditch. And then when I don't have the fabric seam to go on anymore, I'm following the stitching line. I'm gonna stitch down three. That was a little four there, so we'll see how it goes. Actually, it needs to go down a smidge more. And we're gonna stitch right up the center there. So I'm just gonna keep working around like this until I have that diagonal done in the back. Now for this part, rather than keep going with the diagonal, because that's gonna be hard to maintain, it's gonna be a lot of it, I'm just gonna do some straight lines back and forth here using the same concept. Went down a little bit too far, so we'll take one step back. I've got my walking foot lined up with the edge of my piecing, and I'm just gonna stitch into that trunk. when I hit it. Stitch down a few stitches. Give it a turn, see where I'm at. I went back a little, went a little too far forward. You get used to where you want to be once you've done this a few times. All right, that is much better. And now I'm just going to stitch back. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth like this, working my way around. Now to make sure I keep the same interval to make sure it's going down at the same pace, I'm actually gonna stitch around the perimeter of this first so I can get up to the top. 
All right, so now because I'm starting at the top here, I'm able to, gonna be able to keep that same line structure going down. All right, so I finished that last bit. I've stitched down to the edge, and I'm gonna stitch around again, and then I'm gonna start working my way up the side doing the diagonals again. All right, so I am really in love with this quilt and I think it turned out fabulous. I could definitely do more within this tree, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now and I'm gonna throw some binding on this so you can see what it looks like when it's all done. So this is it, our little Christmas tree mug rug. Super cute, super quick. I made this from start to finish in the time it took me to film the video and it really, really is a fun little project. All right, so I hope you are enjoying our 12 Makes of Christmas series. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and to our email list at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We're gonna have more of these for you in the coming days. We're gonna have another mug rug tomorrow. It's a little bit easier, so if this is a little intimidating with all the triangles, stay tuned. And don't forget, if you've been inspired by any of these designs, go ahead on over to shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com and get the supplies you need from us. It's a great way to say thanks for the easy and free tutorials and in this case, a free pattern as well. Thanks so much and happy quilting.